Well, today in Module 3, I want to address the question of how do we overcome the elephant and make ethical decisions based on the Bible, especially as we practice medicine. And in a quick review, I want to just go over again the analogy that was given to us by Dr. Jonathan Haidt, where he looks at the fact that as we make moral decisions or are faced with moral dilemmas, he uses the analogy of an elephant and a rider, with the elephant representing our intuition and the rider representing our rational thinking. And of course, as Christian healthcare professionals, our goal is to have it so that it is the rider that is in control of the elephant the vast majority of time, especially as we are facing ethical dilemma in the patients that we are taking care of. So I want to begin by addressing the question, what does it mean to base our rational thinking on the Bible? Here is how I think about the process of thinking. Beginning at the second floor, where we have and spend 95 to 99 percent of our time in normal discussions, day-to-day -day conversations, day-to-day -day activities, is at the second floor level. And beneath that, at the ground floor level, we have principles that we live by. And these are principles that we don't necessarily have in the, in the conscious part of our brain, but they are the principles that we have developed ourselves and we have chosen to live by. And then underneath the conscience level, in the subterranean part, we have our basic beliefs, our presuppositions that we have adopted up until that point, which essentially makes up our worldview. Now, what we want to do is we want to have what I would call coherence between all three of those levels, and that occurs when our principles come out of our basic beliefs and our presuppositions, and then the way that we live our life comes out of our principles, so that as our day-to-day -day life goes on, we have coherence between all three different levels, and not only in our thinking, but how we actually are living out our life. This is, in essence, the property of having integrity. And it's much easier to live your life when you have integrity and you have all three levels that are in alignment, especially with your basic beliefs and your basic presuppositions. And today I want to first address one of the very common problems that occurs that prevents us from living a life that is coherent and is characterized by integrity. And that is, is that it's not uncommon for us to have a disconnect between our basic beliefs, our basic presuppositions, and our worldview, and the principles and the way that we live that is above that ground level. And if that occurs, we will not be living a coherent life. We will, we will separate ourselves off from our basic beliefs, and we will not be living in integrity. And this is always unfortunate. And it's not the way to live a flourishing life. So I want to help you work through processes and thinking about how to derive biblical principles so that you can live a life not only for yourself and in the way you also practice medicine that is a life that is characterized by integrity. So I would begin in the substructure, the below the ground level, in terms of worldview, and we're going to begin with the presupposition that the Christian worldview is true, and that the Bible is the literal world, word of God, and it contains for us guidance on how we should live our life. And we would take that guidance and develop principles from the Bible itself that then we would take into the second story in not only in our personal lives and how we live our own life, but also in the way that we would practice medicine. And therefore, we would be thinking and acting and living and practicing medicine biblically. I think this really is reflected in what Jesus says here in this verse in Luke. And he says, everyone who comes to me and hears my words and does them, I will show you what he is like. 
He is like a man building a house who dug deep and laid the foundation on the rock. And when a flood arose, the stream broke against that house and could not shake it because it had been well built. But the one who hears and does not do them is like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation. When the stream broke against it, immediately it fell and the ruin of that house was great. So working towards this, biblically thinking, we begin, of course, in the, the substructure, the foundation built upon um, the Word of God, and then move up from there into looking at principles that we can derive from Scripture that will impact our life and our practice of medicine. And the first Scripture that I want to begin with is actually in the Old Te Testament, in Genesis, Genesis 1:27, where God tells us, so God created man in his own image, in the image of God he created him, male and female he created them. So biblical principle number one is that we are created in the image of God. Now no doubt this is a concept, if you've been a Christian for any length of time, this is a concept that you're familiar with. But I want to look a little deeper at it and just remind you that, first of all, we are created, so we are not adopting the accidental worldview where we are just atoms and molecules. We have a creator and we are a creature. But more importantly, this verse tells us that we are created in the image of God. Now, theologians for over 2,000 years have been wrestling with exactly what does that mean. But that's not important to us today. What I really want to focus on is that because we are created in the image of God, no matter what that really means, we have a special dignity that God does not give to any other part of his creation. So we are very different than the animal kingdom. We are very different in terms of plants and animals, any other part of creation, because we as humans are created in the image of our Creator. And that gives us the, the principle of the sanctity of human life. The second thing we learn from this very same verse is that God created us male and female. And of course, this has a big part to play in how we approach various issues, including the current issue of transgender ideology. So the first principle is, again, that we are created in the image of God, and God created us male and female. Another scripture to look at is this one from Ezekiel 18. Behold, all souls are mine, and this is God speaking. The soul of the Father as well as the soul of the Son is mine, God says. The soul who sins shall die. And my focus is on the first part of this verse. And I could have taken various other verses, but the important factor to see out of this is that everyone ultimately belongs to God. Because we are created and we are the creature and not the creator, we owe our very existence to God, and therefore he, in a way, owns us. And so we belong to God. So now what I want you to do is to take some time in discussion with others in your group and try and address these two questions. What are the second story applications, the day-to-day -day practice of medicine, of these first three biblical principles, especially applied to the beginning of life? And secondly, what are the second story applications in medicine of these first three biblical principles as they apply to the end of life? Spend some time discussing these, and when you're done, we'll get back to more biblical principles. Moving on to other scriptures, I've chosen this one from Hebrews. Let marriage be held in honor among all, and let the marriage bed be undefiled, for God will judge the sexually immoral and adulterous, from Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 4. 
from 1 Corinthians, it is good for a man not to have sexual relations with a woman, but because of the temptation to sexual immorality, each man should have his own wife and each woman her own husband. And then from Romans chapter 1, for this reason God gave them up to dishonorable passions, for their women exchanged natural relations for those that are contrary to nature. And the men likewise gave up natural relations with women and were consumed with passion for one another. Men committed shameless acts with men and receiving in themselves the due penalty for their error. And the principle that we can derive from this is that God has established clear boundaries for sexual activity. Now, I want to remind you that God isn't just a cosmic killjoy when it comes to the topic of sex. If you remember, I used the example of being in a created worldview and the example of how a car has certain preset values and preset structures. So if we are a car owner, we don't want to ignore the fact that that car might need oil or the oil changed, because if we do, we will unfortunately shorten the life of that car. And that's because the car was designed and built to require oil, among other things, to keep it running and to have a long life. And that's the way that we need to begin looking at our bodies and the lens of medicine, because God just does not pick out these, these rules arbitrarily or capriciously. He has set certain ways, set boundaries and values within his creation, and if we cross those boundaries, we harm ourselves. And in the practice of medicine, if we see our patients crossing those boundaries, they are, because of the way the world is created, they are harming themselves. So that's an entirely different way to look at the various commandments that we see in the Bible. They are there not because God wants to judge us and take away any type of fun, but rather God wants to protect us from harming ourselves. Here is another verse that also applies in medicine for 1 Corinthians. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own, for you were bought with a price. So glorify God in your body. And to me, what principle we can derive from that scripture is that the, the body has special significance for Christians. And so again, this applies not only to us as Christians, but it really applies to the way that we look at our patients and the way that we take care of our patients, especially if we're going to follow after biblical principles and think biblically as we take care of them. So with these principles in mind, I would encourage you again to go back to your group and look at these four different discussion questions. First of all, how do these biblical principles impact the way that you would plan to practice medicine? Secondly, are there some other foundational scriptures that could be considered as we develop and you develop biblical principles to help guide your second floor thinking? Thirdly, all of us will have emotional reactions to the issues that we talk about as they come to us on the second floor. And so how should you, as a healthcare professional, handle those emotional reactions, especially when they disagree with Scripture? And lastly, what are some habits that you can adopt as a Christian involved in the healthcare profession that will help you guide your elephant as you seek answers to various moral questions in your practice of medicine?